Welcome to Niagara Files, also known as NIFI, a framework for managing complex data flows. Through a series of tutorials, you will learn how to use NIFI to automate and manage flow of information between your various processing systems. The tutorials are designed to be used in an easy and hands-on manner and normally should last no more than 10 minutes each. Lesson 1. I'm going to give a quick overview of NIFI. I'll show you a demo of NIFI that I have running. Uh, what the demo does is it goes out to the USGS website and gets all the quake, earthquake information that it has obtained over the last hour or last day. And it goes through and the NIFI flow parses each earthquake event and then displays those events on a Google map. And the events are color coded so that Earthquakes of magnitude greater than 5 are coded red, uh, between 2 and 5 are coded yellow, and then less than 2 are coded green. So I'll go over a demo of that and show you uh, just a high level view of what NIFI can do for you. Um, I'll talk about what kind of lessons that I wanted to put together to maybe give you a good feel for what NIFI can do for you. And then I'll go over what type of software you should really have to uh, really take advantage of all the stuff NIFI can uh, enable you to do. Uh, for this, all you really need to do, if you want to go to this, uh, the, my, my little website I have here called silvercloudcomputing.com and go to the nifi.html tab, uh, you can follow along with what I'm going to show you and you can actually do the same thing yourself. What it's going to do is I'm going to require you to download a certificate from my website that you'll be able to use in Internet Explorer to actually access um, the Niagara Files demo. I have Niagara Files set up to be um, HTTPS enabled so that you need a certificate in order to access it. So you're going to have to download that and import it into your browser. Okay, for each lesson layout, um, I decided to try and make them relatively short, between 10 to 15 minutes per video or per topic. Uh, given that they're so short, um, they do go by pretty fast. I talk really fast. I go through the videos and some of the directions really fast. Everything I show you is hands-on GUI. You, can, you should be able to replicate, replicate whatever I show you yourself, but um, it does go by pretty fast. I'll, you know, I'll tell you that right now. Um, but it's a video, hey, so you know, go ahead and play it over again and you know, slow it down if you want, if you miss something. And um, you know, just go by what, with what I show you and you should be fine. Um, the software I think you should have if you want to go ahead and get the most out of these NiFi uh, lessons is to have Java installed on your uh, desktop and you can verify that by at a, at a command prompt typing Java dash version. If you get something back that means you have Java installed. Uh, the other thing would be really helpful to have in a later lesson when you're creating your own processors is uh, Maven. If you type MVN dash version if you get something back from that and it shows you have Maven installed uh, you'd want to have that. And then for my ID, I go ahead and use Eclipse, and that comes in handy when you want to go ahead and get to the part where the lesson that talks about uh, creating your own uh, NIFI processor. And finally, I just picked some things I thought were interesting. I've been doing this NIFI stuff for a little while, and I think it's pretty cool. And there's a lot of things you can cover, and the first st stop I would go to would be to go to the NIFI uh, website at Apache. They have some good documents there. They have some good videos there. Uh, this is just something that I found over my experience using NIFI that I thought was pretty interesting, pretty cool. And I just wanted to put something out there on a video to see if I could help you guys um, come up to speed on some of the things NIFI can do for you. And like I said, there's so much left to discuss, and I'm not going to cover everything. I'll just cover some of the things I think are kind of neat and kind of cool. And if anybody has any ideas of anything that they thought I might want to show or highlight, just let me know and I'll see if I can put a video together. So for the topics I wanted to put together, there's obviously is, uh, is this one, the overview of NIFI with the demo, um, how to install and configure Niagara files, uh, what how the GUI works, um, how you can actually create a flow, how you can monitor a flow, stop and start a flow, um, and cr uh, show you how to create a data flow, and um, it's kind of long, so I kind of broke it up into two parts. So you can go ahead and look at those. And then finally, I have some advanced in topics on how to do some advanced data flow stuff. And then how to secure NIFI. If you looked at the demo that I showed you on my website, it's actually a secured version of NIFI, so you can't go in and change anything. You can just pretty much view it as a guest. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in Lesson 7. 
And then in lesson eight, I show you how to create a processing group. And what a processing group is, again, what I showed you in the demo is you have these, these little groups that you can kind of um, drop all these processors in that have like information. I think I had one group that would um, uh, deliver stuff. So I put all my delivery kind of processors in that processing group. So I show you how that works. Uh, with NiFi, you can actually scale this. It scales really well. You can actually cluster them together. So if you have a uh, high data, a lot of data files coming through, you can actually cluster, add more NiFi processors, more more computers, more machines to your um, environment, and cluster the NiFi um, uh, servers together. And then I actually go over how to create your own custom processor. It's very easy to do. Uh, but you need to have Eclipse installed, you need to have Java installed, and you need to have Maven installed. And finally, if I have time, I'll go over some of the uh, NiFi expression languages. Um, the NiFi group in Apache covers it really well. Um, I'll just show you some things that I thought were interesting as far as you know, some things you can do with um, the expression language to try and uh, make better use of the flows. And again, for this lesson, I just went over uh, the basic overview of NiFi by showing you the demo I put together on uh, the Silver Cloud Computing webpage. And we talked about the lessons. Again, they're going to be very fast. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's a video. You can watch it over again if you want. And then the software you should have, again, Java, Maven, and Eclipse. You really won't need those till the later lesson where we actually create our own processor. So you could get by, you could get by without any of those. But you do need Java. And Okay, to view the demo, you, you're going to want to go to silvercloudcomputing.com, and I'll take you to this web page here, and then you want to click on the NiFi tab, and that'll show you what you need to get started to go to the uh, demo. So let's go ahead and let's see. The first thing we want to do is download the key uh, so you can be a, a guest user. So let's zoom in on this a little bit so you can see a little better. And basically what you have to do is I generated some certificates, a guest certificate, and we're going to download that and import that into our Internet Explorer. So we're going to click the download button here so we can download the certificate. Go ahead and save it. Uh, save it to your download folder. And we're going to go ahead and open it and just rename it uh, guest, as it says in the instructions there. Let's see if I can move it down here. You're going to say guest.p12. And then we're going to go ahead and import that key into our um, Internet Explorer. So let's copy the location. And now we're going to go ahead and import that key. Go up here to Content, Certificates, Import. And we'll put our download path in there. And then we're going to go ahead and filter on the P12 types of uh, certificates. And we should see our guest certificate. And there it is. Go ahead and open that. And we're going to be asked for the password, which is going to be guest1234. So go ahead and type in guest1234. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. And it should say our import was successful. Yes. OK, so now we have imported our guest certificate into our Internet Explorer. OK, it's one I generated myself. It's not trusted and all the other stuff. So um, you know, go ahead and use it. It's not going to uh, hurt you or anything. So now you click on the NiFi demo website. It'll take you to the NiFi demo webpage. It's going to ask you to use the certificate that you just imported. Hit OK. And it's going to come back since it, wa it was generated by me. It wasn't just not trusted. But just go ahead and continue the website anyways. And this will take you to my NiFi demo webpage. And what this webpage does is it collects earthquake data and displays them in a web page format. So let's look at the, uh, and all this stuff will get explained as the lessons go on. There's like a couple lessons I have to explain all this stuff. But I just want to give you a general overview of what, what a flow file uh, flow looks like. So in this case, I have uh, a block that acquires the earthquake data from the USGS works, uh, website. So let's go ahead and open, uh, open that up. And we go ahead and uh, deliver it. And let's see. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this so you can see where I'm actually getting the data from. Okay, a little more. Okay, so I'm doing an HTTP request to the USGS website uh, once an hour uh, to get the latest earthquake all day earthquake data. So you can see here it takes 10 minutes after the hour is when I go get it. And then when we get that file, we go ahead and actually parse out. It's an XML file. You can actually look at it yourself. 
and we parse out uh, some XML information from that uh, file. And actually, that file is composed of like maybe 100 or so earthquake incidents. So I use this to actually parse out each separate earthquake event information. So I might have one file going in, maybe 100 files going out. And then from that earthquake event, I actually get a bunch of other specific event information, like the city, the lat, the long, the magnitude, and the time that the earthquake occurred. And then from that, I set the color that's going to be displayed on the GUI based upon the earthquake um, level. So if anything's, I'll show you here in the advanced setting. Oh, let's try this again. Ah. All right, so we're going to look at each, each event, each earthquake event. And we're going to set the color that we're going to show on our map based upon the magnitude. So it's re red is greater than 5, uh, yellow is less than 2, and then green is, is uh, less than 2, and then yellow is between 2 and 5. All right, from there we deliver it, and I deliver it two ways. One of it, I write it locally to the hard drive, and another way I go deliver it through JMS message through ActiveMQ. Saving locally, it's just a simple matter of pretty much writing the file out to the local drive. So again, each event, earthquake event information is written to the local drive, so you might have 100 of them per hour. And here I just write it, uh, I have these predefined uh, variables as far as where we write it to. And then I also do a JMS uh, message I send to an active MQ server I have running. And it does pretty much collects all this information to create an HTML page to display the uh, earthquake event for the last hour. And I send that to a JMS queue, which is, let's see, here I set the name. And if it starts with JMS, that's just a tag to say that propagate it through the JMS active MQ server. And then here's where I actually send the JMS message to a topic I have called nifi.quake.data. Okay, I'm not going to tell you the password, but unfortunately I guess I can show you the username. And then we have another block that actually receives the JMS data. Same sort of deal, we get the earthquake event off the topic that we just sent it to. So again, you might have about 100 of them or so an hour. Uh, same deal. Uh, NiFi Quake data, except this time it's a consumer. It actually consumes the JMS uh, message, and then it goes ahead and SFTPs that over to the web server, where we can go ahead and display it. And again, that's the variable I have set. The remote path is the variable I have set in NiFi. So you can see there's not too much to all this um, this flow. There's about 31 processors there. Again, we acquire the data. Uh, we can look to see the history that uh, of the statistics that we can see that we've sent a file out pretty much one one an hour, about 10 minutes after the hour. So you can see here we can zoom in on it if we want to, on the lower part here. So you can see uh, about once an hour we go ahead and grab a file. And then if you scroll down more to the next block where we actually parse out the actual events, you can see that um, we parse out each earthquake event from that one big file we just received. So you might have one file in, you might have, um, let's see how many we have here coming out. Um, full files out, here it is. So we got about 150 coming out. Okay, there's a couple instances there we have 300. So again, uh, one file in parses out to 300 files coming out in XML. All right, let's go back to our NiFi web page. Let's look at the uh, web page results. Uh, let's try this again. There we go. And this is what it looks like. So this is all generated by NiFi. Uh, it's FTP'd over to a web server, and I display this stuff. Um, and again, the colors are based upon the magnitude. Green is, means it wasn't too bad an earthquake. Uh, red means it was a severe one. If you highlight over the little icon there, it'll give you some event information as far as the quake, where it occurred, and what time it occurred, and the magnitude. Uh, here are some red ones here. Those should be greater than 5. Let's see. Yeah, so that one was 5.7. So again, not much to it. Every hour it goes out and does a poll, and then it goes ahead and updates this web page. So you can just play around and look around if you want. And I think we saw these were about 150 events here. You can also look at our ActiveMQ if you want. And just see that how much we've generated. Let's see, 2,600 messages since uh, since it's been started. And I think I restarted this yesterday, so pretty straightforward. So we have three things running here: NiFi, a web server, and ActiveMQ. 
and I'll try and put the videos right here so you can look at the videos I'm going to put on YouTube. And that's it. Okay, for each lesson layout, um, I decided to try and make them relatively short, between 10 to 15 minutes per video or per topic. Uh, given that they're so short, um, they do go by pretty fast. I talk really fast. I go through the videos and some of the directions really fast. Everything I show you is hands-on GUI. You, can, you should be able to replicate, replicate whatever I show you yourself, but um, it does go by pretty fast. I'll, you know, I'll tell you that right now. Um, but it's a video, hey, so you know, go ahead and play it over again and you know, slow it down if you want, if you miss something. And um, you know, just go by what, with what I show you and you should be fine. Um, the software I think you should have if you want to go ahead and get the most out of these NiFi uh, lessons is to have Java installed on your uh, desktop. And you can verify that by at a, at a command prompt typing java-version. If you get something back, that means you have Java installed. Uh, the other thing would be really helpful to have in a later lesson when you're creating your own processors is uh, Maven. If you type MVN-version, if you get something back from that and it shows you have Maven installed, uh, you'd want to have that. And then for my ID, I go ahead and use Eclipse, and that comes in handy when you want to go ahead and get to the part where the lesson that talks about uh, creating your own uh, NiFi processor. And finally, I just picked some things I thought were interesting. I've been doing this NiFi stuff for a little while, and I think it's pretty cool. And there's a lot of things you can cover, and the first st stop I would go to would be to go to the NiFi uh, website at Apache. They have some good documents there. They have some good videos there. Uh, this is just something that I found over my experience using NiFi that I thought was pretty interesting, pretty cool. And I just wanted to put something out there on a video to see if I could help you guys um, come up to speed on some of the things NiFi can do for you. And like I said, there's so much left to discuss, and... I'm not going to cover everything. I'll just cover some of the things I think are kind of neat and kind of cool. And if anybody has any ideas of anything that they thought I might want to show or highlight, just let me know, and I'll see if I can put a video together. So for the topics I wanted to put together, there's obviously is, uh, is this one, the overview of NiFi with the demo, um, how to install and configure Niagara files, uh, what, how the GUI works, um, how you can actually create a flow, how you can monitor a flow, stop and start a flow, um, and cr I cr show you how to create a data flow. And um, it's kind of long, so I kind of broke it up into two parts. So you can go ahead and look at those. And then finally, I have some advanced in topics on how to do some advanced data flow stuff. And then how to secure an IFI. If you looked at the demo that I showed you on my website, it's actually a secured version of NiFi, so you can't go in and change anything. You can just pretty much view it as a guest. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in Lesson 7. And then in Lesson 8, I'll show you how to create a processing group. And what a processing group is, again, what I showed you in the demo is you have these, these little groups that you can kind of um, drop all these processors in that have like information. I think I had one group that would um, uh, deliver stuff. So I put all my delivery kind of processors in that processing group. So I'll show you how that works. Uh, with NiFi, you can actually scale this. It scales really well. You can actually cluster them together. So if you have a uh, high data, a lot of data files coming through, you can actually cluster, add more NiFi processors, more, more computers, more machines to your um, environment, and cluster the NiFi um, uh, servers together. And then I actually go over how to create your own custom processor. It's very easy to do. Uh, but you need to have Eclipse installed, you need to have Java installed, and you need to have Maven installed. And finally, if I have time, I'll go over some of the uh, NiFi expression languages. Um, the NiFi group in Apache covers it really well. Um, I'll just show you some things that I thought were interesting as far as you know, some things you can do with um, the expression language to try and uh, make better use of the flows. And again, for this lesson, I just went over uh, the basic overview of NiFi by showing you the demo I put together on uh, the Silver Cloud Computing webpage. And we talked about the lessons. Again, they're going to be very fast. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's a video. You can watch it over again if you want. And then the software you should have, again, Java, Maven, and Eclipse. You really won't need those till the later lesson where we actually create our own processor. So you could get by, you could get by without any of those. But you do need Java installed to run Niagara Files.